So I actually didn't uh, choose CBC. Uh, I was in a seminary in high school, uh, boarding school for four years. And uh, truth be told, I got kicked out in September of what should have been my first year of college. I decided I wanted to be an engineer. CBC had a catch-up program that allowed students who hadn't done well in math to, uh, to still continue an engineering career. The CBC uh, fortunately accepted me, even though they were already in session, as long as I could get here in the first week. So when I checked in, the freshman parts of the dorm were all full, so they put me in with some upperclassmen who were mostly here to avoid the draft. They weren't engineers, they were just sort of goof-offs. I'm sorry if any of them are listening, but you know who you are. So I get thrown in with these upperclassmen, and I was a social outcast to be sure. Somewhere along the line though, I ran into a bunch of other misfits who mostly liked playing cards in their off hours and we formed a group called the FYBA. And the FYBA was sort of a disrespectful mock fraternity and these guys helped me get through and helped me be socially acceptable and to this day, they're my best friends and we get together once a year and still play that same old card game. Scholastically, it was a real tough start. Not having had math, I got put into the five credit hour class with Mr. Coker that was supposed to catch you up on all the math that you missed in high school. And so I had to go to summer school and took one semester uh, 21 hours, including two labs. I worked pretty hard, but I managed to graduate in four years. I'm pretty happy about that. I learned from uh, Ray Brown that a good teacher can teach anybody anything. When I was in his presence, when he was teaching, my mind opened up and I could see everything. It was amazing what he could do. In fact, senior year I took a course that I would never have taken only to watch him work again. It taught me that anywhere I go in my career I should find that smart person who knows how to talk to the right audience, who knows how to explain something in simple terms. As I look back at my career, CBC gave me a bit of an inferiority complex because I went to a small school and I was competing with some bigger league players. I was lucky my father helped me, I'm sure, get a job with General Electric when I graduated. My draft number was low, I was ranked A1, I was Vietnam bound. GE was one of the few companies that would hire me. And so here I am working in the manufacturing management program at GE, a premier program for people in manufacturing at the time. And uh, I always felt a little inferior that I'd just gone to CBC. So I took the worst assignments, the toughest jobs, the ugliest businesses, the worst factory. One time. I had a factory where, as general foreman, I was supposed to control the workforce and they had 13 wildcat strikes in six months. I took all the ugly jobs. And over the course of my career, it turned out that I became known for being a troubleshooter and I would get parachuted into our worst businesses. This worry about competing with these big schools had me learning a whole lot more about tough, tough situations than any of my peers did. So in 1998, I was promoted to become the president of Honeywell's Automotive Products Group. This was the biggest job I'd ever had. 10,000 employees around the world, two and a half billion dollars in sales. I thought I'd finally made it. Larry Bossidy, the CEO at the time, sent an email to all of the presidents in the company because he was upset that we'd hired some students from colleges that hadn't been targeted like MIT or Harvard, some smaller schools. And he said in the email, I'm sick and tired of hiring students from rinky-dink colleges just because they have a relative that works at Honeywell. That was devastating. I thought I'd finally made it and still I had this chip on my shoulder that maybe I didn't belong here. So in 2001, I was recruited to become the CEO of Hexel Corporation, a public company that makes composite materials, specialty materials for aerospace and electronics. I thought for the first time I'm going to have a job that doesn't require a turnaround, doesn't require any kind of layoffs. This company is going to grow to the sky and I'm going to have a good time for the ending of my career. Well, it was really great for 42 days. And then September 11, 2001, the towers went down and our business was mostly totally dependent on aerospace. So we ended up with a huge amount of debt and almost had to go through bankruptcy. It was a pretty scary time. As I faced my board looking for support, I found that they're all Yale, Harvard, and Stanford graduates. And they thought this is a boy and a man's job and that they'd hired the wrong cowboy. Well, in fact, turnarounds is something I knew how to do. Thanks to my experience from uh, always taking the tough jobs, 
uh, the toughness that I developed, I was able to uh, rally the troops and we were able to turn the company around. The stock went from $10.50 when they hired me down to $1.58 at its darkest hour, uh, but it's done very, very well since, and I was able to retire successfully. But that's not the interesting part of the story. Harvard did a case study on this turnaround of 2001, and for 10 years they taught it in the Harvard Business School, and they asked me up to be the protagonist. And after the students assess what I should or shouldn't have done, I answer their questions. And I was booked between Lou Gerstner, who turned around IBM, and Jamie Dimon, who turned around JP Morgan, both Harvard Business School grads. This little buck from Memphis, Tennessee, teaching the Harvard class. All because CBC gave me a chance. And for that, I am grateful. Deborah and I have done well in our careers, and we both want to give back. We target small, dedicated programs that focus on scholarship and diversity, giving people a chance. Right after I graduated, I saw my dad writing a check to CBU. After I graduated, I think it was for $25. I said, Dad, I already graduated. Why are you writing a check to CBC? He said, well, they gave you a chance, and I want to support them. Well, I never forgot that. My first job at GE, I was making $10,000 a year. I had a pregnant wife, and I could hardly afford to eat. But I felt like I needed to write a check to CBC. I wrote a check for $50, because of course it had to be more than my dad wrote. And uh, brother Malcolm O'Sullivan was a president at the time, and he knew my situation, and that I was probably gonna get drafted. He sent the check back. Now since then, I've given every year. I've given a little bit more. But I believe in uh, CBC, CBU, and what they do for the community and what they do for uh, people who otherwise couldn't get there. CBU gave me a chance, and as long as they're doing that, Deborah and I are behind them.